So hello, Eric. Hello, uh, uh, Brett. Welcome to Sonic Perspectives, and thank you so much for joining us today. It's a real pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for having us, Rob. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm digging the new CD. It's quite ferocious, and uh, I've been listening to it ever since uh, Steve sent it over to me. Fabulous. Glad you, you like know. it. Thank I you. do, I do. You know, being new to the band and re- band being relatively new, tell me a little bit about the origins, uh, how you guys got together, met, connected. Uh, two of us, the bass player and I, uh, were in a previous group together for many years. Um, I started working with uh, the drummer, Scott, um, kind of on and off for fun, uh, just getting together and having little impromptu jam sessions. And uh, I think about the time the pandemic hit, uh, it just felt like a good time to make it a real thing and make it official. We we would get together and uh, it was always just prolific. There were a lot of song ideas and a lot of good shells of tracks coming together. And uh, so that's what we did. Um, and then uh, about midway through uh, the making of Near Life Experience, uh, enter Eric Fairchild. Yeah, I'd been friends with Brett for a long time, many years, our bands had always sort of intersected with various producers and actually the guy that produced Near Life Experience, Jeremy, I was in a band with him for many years. And so uh, Brett and I's paths had often crossed and, and we were buds and we ran into each other one day at a restaurant. We were both picking up food and he said, hey, what are you up to? Are you playing with anybody? I said, I'm not. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys do it. You guys are a really tremendous uh, asset on guitar. You have some great chemistry together. How did you know it was going to work out when you got together? Well, I knew Brett could tear it up. I mean, it's sort of, it's known. It's known around the area that Brett knows <laughs> how to play some guitar. So I don't know how Brett knew about me, but. <laughs> um, well, I think there's like, um, you know, there's a cool thing I noticed uh, between us. I've never really told you. We, we kind of tend to agree on what we think the, the uh, final solution of cool is on whatever it is we do. Um, yeah. And uh, we, have, we have similar tastes in guitars, similar tastes in guitar sounds, uh, you know, maybe different influences and such growing up. But I mean, um, we seem to like a lot of the same stuff. So I think it just kind of works. I, I thought the, I thought your tones were blended really, really well. That was the first thing I noticed on the first song, and that's it's my favorite song. But I thought you guys had a tremendous uh, tone quality together. That worked well. Congratulations on that. Sometimes that always doesn't come out. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, and, and some credit to our producer Jeremy as well for sort of you know shepherding the guitar tones in the right way. You know to to blend yeah. them. And, you know he's a he's a big influence on that as well. No, he did, did, did a tremendous job. Um, I'm intrigued by the writing process. Do you guys go into a rehearsal space and jam out ideas, or do you um, like to write separately and then bring ideas to the table? How does it work for the band? It's it's kind of all <clears throat> of um, There are a few songs that have started uh, with kind of a riff that got kicked around in the rehearsal space. Um, a lot of songs, when, when this was happening, you know, we were kind of, in the midst of the whole lockdown, I was just demoing songs at home. And then when Eric joined, kind of midway through, we found this great chemistry starting to develop between he and I. And as of late, we've been kind of the two of us have been writing together, or maybe uh, there's an example um, on the album, uh, Witchcraft Sing Along is a track, uh, kind of a ripping, uh, kicking number. And uh, there, there's an example of a song uh, where I wrote the music and Eric wrote the lyrics and the melody. And, okay. you know, it, I, I think that's like kind of the, the, the happy, happy thing that happened kind of midway through the album for me is that I've got an awesome writing partner. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's tremendous. Um, do you like to start off with a riff or do you like to start off with a melody first? What, what typically comes to you? Well, I'll say Brett, Brett's like a riff factory, so <laughs> there's no shortage of cool riffs coming from Brett. I mean, truly, you know, and I mean that yeah. as, as, as we joke about that, but it really is a it's a it's a positive thing. I think I think it often starts, at least in my experience, with you know, kind of some guitar theme riff or whatever, which you know takes shape into something else. I don't know if you'd agree, Brett. 
I agree a hundred percent. I think that's where we kind of fill in all the gaps. Like I love singing, um, but it was secondary for me along the way. I started as a guitarist. Uh, Eric is also an accomplished lead singer, lead guitar player as well, you know, has fronted his own bands in the past. Um, my strength is in kicking out like riffs like Doritos and <laughs> with like, you know, he's, he's kind of a, a scholar of all things pop music and great melodies and uh, always thinking about the vocal and the tempo of the vocal and the phrasing. And um, so if he's strong in that area and I'm strong in this area, uh, not that we're, we're not both, you know, doing good things and, you know, cross pollinating both places. Um, that's how it works. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm an old school guitar player, grew up in the 80s, you know, the Judas Priest, the Iron Maiden, where everything was riff based. And that's how I learned how to play guitar with great riffs. And I really think you've captured fantastic riffs on this album. What constitutes a good riff to you guys that would make the album? Tony Iommi. Wow. <laughs> you know, <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, good like, choice. Yeah, I, it, it was the same for me. I mean, um, I mean, you, you hear the duality of the guitar approach on this, like, uh, I really started getting into it with Priest, with Maiden, um, yeah. you know, uh, Scorpions. Yes, you know, Scorpions. You know, um, you know, all things guitar from, you know, late 70s uh, through, through all, you know, some of my heroes. Uh, Lynch was a big hero, Rhodes, Shanker. Uh, yeah, we have the same. Yeah. And... Uh, so I think that's just kind of burned into my brain. You know, I always I always think about Angus Young and Tony Iommi and, you know, the Priest guys. And, you know, it's just imprinted on me. Um, so and I have an interesting perspective in that, you know, Fuzzard existed before I joined. So I had heard the band completely removed. You know, there there had been a couple singles released before I even joined and I remember saying to Jeremy, who is our producer, but also just a great friend of mine, I said, what's, you know, what's up with, what's going on with Buzzard? Like, that's a cool thing. And I remember I said, it's like, it's like a throwback sound, but doesn't feel dated. Mm -hmm. you know? So it has like, and like you're saying, like a lot of those influences that you guys were just talking about, like it has a lot of that kind of, you know, throwback guitar riff sort of stuff, but it doesn't sound necessarily like you're listening to a track from the seventies. It's got a little bit more of a contemporary edge. And uh, that was appealing to me. It felt like, I don't know, it felt authentic in that way, you know, cause I knew Brett and I knew like, yeah, it's like, I know he's into all that stuff, but it doesn't sound like he's trying to do just like, Oh, it's all throwback, but that influence is very clearly there, which I think is cool. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I, I, I do a lot of interviews. I hear a lot of music. And um, it seems like so many musicians are trying to over occupy every note, every you know beat with, with music. And sometimes that gets lost from a great riff. And I think you guys did a fantastic job of balancing that. And I like personally what a great riff constitutes to me is I could sing it in my head and I'll, I'll keep hearing it. And I'll keep hearing it at night before I go to bed and when I wake up and I say, I got to hear this again. And I think you guys did a tremendous job of that, where it's not oversaturated with every note, every beat, every measure, with something going on. You let the music breathe. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of that is the way our drummer Scott approaches things too. He gives he gives a lot of space, and yes. um, when people kind of relinquish that to the other members, then everybody else doesn't feel so pressured to I've got to fill everything up all the time. And you can let simple moments happen and. Um, you know, I always think, um, you know, I, I'll use Sabbath as an, uh, another reference point. You know, t Tony Iommi always has these monstrous riffs, um, but they're simple in nature. Yes. And the bass player's got so much room to do, like, cool walk-arounds and things. And, you know, nothing ever sounds crowded. And you can always, like, take your pick, track who you want to track as you're listening um, auditorily. So... Are you a fan of the Dio era, era Sabbath or the Ozzy Sarah, era? Yeah, man, I love it. I love Dio. it all. Um, I, I love it all. I like, I love the Ozzy, you know, obviously the, the first three Ozzy albums uh, with Rhodes and, and uh, Jakey Lee. Um, all the old school Sabbath with Ozzy is great, but I love um, Mob Rolls and Heaven and Hell. Um, yeah, one I of love, my favorites. I would uh, I would Desert Island Mob Rules as a, as a record for me. I just really? think about it, yeah. And wow, I think the interplay between the guitar and the bass, and I, I love his rhythm tones on that album. 
when I started getting into music and playing, they had broken up. So I was a huge fan of Ozzy solo and I was a huge fan of Sabbath with Dio and learned to cut my teeth on heaven and hell. And that's just such a tremendous album and such an influence for me. Randy Rhodes was like untouchable. It couldn't understand what he was doing. It was like uh, calculus on the guitar. Yeah. I said, I don't know what he's doing, but I understood what Tony was doing with his riff, riff bass. It was very easy to understand and interpret. Yeah. And that's probably where I picked up the double everything disease. It's Randy Rhodes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, how long, have, you know, how long have you been working up these songs, Brett, before uh, Eric came in and how many songs basically with Eric's involvement for, on, are on the CD? Uh, a good, you know, a good 50% of the songs have Eric's involvement. And then in particular, uh, like Out on a Limb, uh, Pins and Needles and Witchcraft, we co-wrote uh, together. Okay. Again, the songs, you know, I mean, I guess about a half a year, uh, about a year and a half total. Okay, that's not bad. That's pretty quick. Really, it was it 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 really was the snapshot of you know 2020, 2021 in total. Um, All right. What we did and tried to kind of document it along the way and bring people in leading up to the album. So. Very cool. There was a lot, um, of, a lot of free time in 2020 and 2021 yeah. to write songs for everybody. <laughs> I, I don't disagree. When the pandemic first started, I went back and started to learn all the cover songs that I used to play when I was a kid and trying to relearn all those. So, yeah, it, it, it's great that you were using your, your time wisely to create new music. So kudos to you guys. You know, songs are written in different ways for different purposes uh, based upon your frame of mind. One day you uh, might be creating something adequate and the next day suddenly something very special. How often does things like that happen when uh, working together? Hmm. You're kind of always trying to capture some magical moments, right? And, and they, they, can, they can be fleeting. I would say the, the, <clears throat> the true moments where it's like, whoa, like the, those, those don't come along all the time. Um, and, you know, but you're always, you're always kind of on the hunt for that super magic moment to happen. Um, and a lot of, I think, a lot of being uh, artistic and creative and being a band is just doing the work. Uh, and some of it isn't always fun, right? But you're, but like the, you do the work. Um, what, I, I was, this, this great quote from a book I read and I can't remember the name of the book, but the, the, the purpose of the overwhelming majority of your work is to teach you how to make the stuff that's great, you know? And so- you you really just it, it can't all be you know it can't all be Grammy of the year or whatever album of the year but <laughs> you're on that quest right and and we yes. do have those moments where we'll be sitting you know in the room and something will happen and it's just like oh wow and then you really want to chase that feeling and so it's sort of you know you're you're chasing that high of of the magic moment for sure it sounds very spontaneous yeah I think so but there's but again there's a lot of it is like you just a lot a lot of times you just got to do the work which, you know, all right, we got to finish this. You know, we, we got three hours, let's finish this song. And then, you know, you, you do the work and, and magic happens along the way. How about you, Brett? When you're popping these riffs out like nachos, like Doritos? I don't know, I mean, the riffs are just always on, I guess, um, you know, and sometimes I, I just get lucky and stumble across some, some good ones. And um, I'd like Eric says, you, sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. Like you, you just can't nurture your own self doubt. You have to put something down because you never know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you might second guess yourself. You shouldn't. I, I mean, for me, I, I think that's the thing. And then, you know, with the lyric writing, um, you know, I think once in a great while you do have a story uh, that's maybe autobiographical that just comes out and, that's that's the magic that like for me i'm always i'm always waiting for it to happen but i agree with eric 100 percent. you've just got to write a lot of songs to get to a good song if you guys could each pick what song came to you from a, like a gift from above or like eric said a magic moment that was captured which do you think was uh each of yours i i can tell you mine it was demons um and uh that song just kind of spit itself out for me um and that was one i i, I kind of carried with me actually that started a little bit before fuzzard and i remember um having 
you know, it, it was about uh, meeting the brother that I never knew I had, who told oh. me about the father that I never knew, um, who, wow. you know, kind of spent the better, the, you know, 30 years of my life not really having the answers to these things. And through the magic of the internet, um, I figured it all out in 45 minutes. Um, it gave me a song. Uh, it was amazing. Um, you know, I wish I could find a way to harness that. Uh, I don't know how, um, but it came out. And I remember calling Jeremy going, dude, I got, I got this song. Like we got to just go record it. And uh, it felt great. And um, actually the vocal that we laid down um, kind of raw and on the spot, like right when the song was written, um, I remember we, we did a bunch of passes and he just kept them. And th that's the original vocal that's on, um, on the record. We, I just decided like there's, there's no point in trying to redo that because it felt a certain way. Um, so that was my tune, you know. That's an incredible story. That's just an incredible story. How about, how about you, Eric? What was yours, uh, magic moment, your gift I from think above? One of the things that, um, one of the first songs that I worked closely with Brett on was Pins and Needles. And there was a moment where um, it it didn't pins and needles didn't really have it was just kind of music at the point when I came in there wasn't a lot of uh, lyric or melody ideas was, you know Brett had some sketched out stuff but we were sitting together and we and we we hit on uh, the the pre-chorus melody uh, where you know where it really for me was a, a little bit of a magic moment about like oh like we're gonna gel great. Yeah. Uh, as 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 guys that write songs together we just kind of I, I you know I said well, what about this and I kind of threw out this vocal melody and he immediately started harmonizing it and like oh that's great and then it could go into this and how about this and it was just a very uh a prolific session at, at the end of that it was like wow like this song is done and it's cool like it really felt great to 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 know like because I was into being in the band I joined the band it was cool but that was kind of an element that was unknown was how is that dynamic going to work and it was kind of a magical moment of oh wow yeah this is going to be great and we're going to we're going to gel and connect writing wise and and you know bounce some good ideas off each other yeah this awesome. was tremendous it was great and brad is actually the father that i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> i felt like i had to live up to that story mine's not as good you know <laughs> yeah uh, it was that was that was a it was still a great Great uh, insight. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. I think it's tremendous. Uh, yeah, Brett's story is crazy. That's a that's an incredible yeah, very story. Cool. It's a cool story for sure. There's a, I don't mean to digress, but there was a, something I was watching on CNN where it was three brothers who never knew they had each other and they found each other in high school. I don't know if you've seen it, but it, Brett, you might get a kick out of it. It was it was really riveting to watch these three guys who never knew each other who found each other by accident and then found their birth parents. Uh, yeah, that's that's awesome. No, I can yeah, relate. Was, sure. Yeah. Totally. Um, my favorite song, is, we talked about a bunch of songs. But my favorite song was Monster Carnival. Can you tell me a little bit about its creation? Uh, yeah, you know, OK, <clears throat> that started with a riff. Uh, and I can tell you exactly how I got inspired with that riff. Um, and rehearsals while we were kind of doing the band thing and kind of, you know, getting the sketchbook together for the album, so to speak. Uh, I was running a single, single 100 watt head and a 412 cabinet, you know, whichever one I felt like using at the time. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to go back to my live rig and uh, go back to a dual mono setup with, you know, 200 watt heads, two cabs, you know, get the stereo imaging going. And I went down to the rehearsal space one night and uh, I set up, uh, I had this bog, uh, Oh, Eric's using it now. It's a Bogner modded Marshall uh, JCM 800, uh, mm. aka the Snorkeler uh, from the first Alice in Chains record. That mod uh, just set up, had this crushing tone, and just like that riff came out, um, and that's what kind of kicked it off for me. So, um, you know, I guess that doesn't really touch on the lyrics, but that was the spark of the song. That's great. That's great insight. Um, I have my last question for you guys uh, and to both of you. What is being a relatively new band? What does success look like for you guys? I'll take that. Um, it feels like right now. For yeah. Me, I am just so happy with everything we're creating and what we're doing. Like 
um, hearing the album back, uh, having um, having these comrades to share this with uh, and just do what we do. Like, I'm in it. I love it. I, I feel successful now. That's um, fantastic. Anything that happens above and beyond what we've done is just icing. Yeah. Living in the moment. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah I would agree. I mean, the, you just the, the creation, you know, the, the, the process is the satisfying part. And then all the stuff after that is great. And sure, like, let's have world domination as well. I would, I would, <laughs> like, I would enjoy that. That would, I would also consider that success. But in the meantime, it's true. It's, it's about just, it's about creating you know that that's that's and and the fact that we've done it and we're happy with it and we we have a a product that um it's weird even calling it a product but you know a collection of yeah. songs that that we're, we're proud of it feels successful for sure that is fantastic uh any chance you guys coming to new jersey during this pandemic or coming out this way new jersey new york area because i'd love to come and see your show that would be part of the world domination <laughs> at least the east coast the new england domination yeah yeah uh, you, uh, not, unfortunately, nothing on the books right now, but the summer is starting to fill up for sure for, for dates. And, you know, I, we would love to, of course, uh, uh, go everywhere. No question. I'll keep, I'm going to keep an eye on your site and I'll work with Steve. And when you come to my area, New York, New Jersey, I'll definitely come out and see you guys and say hello, introduce That'd myself. Great. But I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. It was a really fascinating interview and really insightful. And I can't say enough great things about your new CD. So congratulations on that. You guys did a tremendous job. Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Take it easy. It was nice speaking with you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.